Everyone's career path can be a little different, but the most common career path for startups and big tech companies, especially for engineers, looks something like this. You start off as an engineering intern throughout your time in university. As you graduate college, you become a junior engineer. Then after about one or two years of work experience, you become an engineer. That's the level that I'm at right now. And then after a few more years of work experience, you can become a senior engineer. From then on, things start to get a little interesting. First, you can stay as a senior engineer for a pretty long time. It's not because you're not good enough to get promoted, but a lot of people would actually prefer this position because at this position, you're actually at your technical prime. You're really focusing on being technical and designing and building the best possible product that you can. You're not managing anyone or planning what the future of the company will look like. So taking a step up from your current role as a senior engineer can take up the fun or the joy of being an engineer since you're not doing as much engineering work anymore. When you've been a senior engineer for a while, you can move between different projects and different teams. For example, a mechanical engineer might move over to work on cameras, pick up that technology, and then after a few years, move on and work on thermodynamics projects. And doing so just helps you become a much more well-rounded engineer. After a while of being a senior engineer, some people move on and become lead engineers. You start taking more responsibilities by leading projects and helping plan where the future of the company is heading, but you're not really focused on managing people just yet. You can then choose to continue to progress towards a staff or a principal engineer. Here, you're not expected to be very technical, but you're expected to be able to lead and influence people. A senior or lead engineer will work across one team, whereas a staff or a principal engineer will work across multiple teams across the entire company. Now, if you get tired of electrical engineering work, you can choose to take the managerial route from your senior engineering position. Engineering managers typically don't do any designing, coding, or building anymore. Instead, they manage teams of like five to 15 people. They spend a lot of their time hiring, making sure the team is healthy, helping other team members grow, and making sure that their team is working on the right things. They also spend a lot of time working with other roles in the company like data scientists, product managers, UX designers, etc. You can then continue climbing up, becoming a senior manager, then director where you start to manage multiple teams. You basically work your way up then to senior director, VP, and eventually C-suite. So that's like CEO, CTO, COO, etc. Another common thing that many people do in their engineering career is when they're relatively young, maybe like when they're an engineering intern, junior engineer, or just an engineer, they might make the switch to product management. The people that do so are ones that don't really enjoy the technical aspect of engineering and would rather spend their time really just communicating and talking to a lot of people. Basically, being super social is a big part of their job. From then on, they can get promoted to a senior product manager and then eventually become the lead product manager on the team that they're working on. One thing you may be wondering though is what's the difference between a product manager and an engineering manager? An engineering manager is someone that's in charge of people, whereas a product manager on the other hand is someone that's in charge of a part, a product, or a feature. For example, a product manager can be in charge of the instrument panel of a car, or maybe the power button on an iPhone, or even the Instagram notifications feature. Now that you have a better understanding of the engineering career mind map, here's what we can apply to the top paying tech companies. Now they all use different names for each level, and each level is a different length, and some companies have more levels than others. For example, Apple uses the term ICT, which stands for Individual Contributor in Tech. ICT2 is a junior engineer, ICT3 is an engineer, and ICT4 is a senior engineer. On the other hand, Google uses the abbreviation L, which stands for level. A junior engineer would be L3, an engineer would be L4, a senior engineer would be L5, etc. Facebook, or I guess that's now called Meta, uses similar terminology as Google, but instead of L3, L4, and L5, they use E3, E4, and E5, where E just stands for engineer. And if you're curious about pay at these companies, junior engineers or people that just got this job fresh out of college or university at Apple can make $167,000 per year, junior engineers at Google can make $190,000 per year, whereas junior engineers at Facebook can make $184,000 per year. Now, this may vary slightly based on what engineering discipline you're in, what team you're working on, your salary negotiation skills, or if you have any past internship experience. So it's just a general ballpark. Now that you have an idea of what the seven engineering career levels are and how they relate to one another, let's look at each one in a little bit more detail. An engineering intern technically requires zero years of work experience. Their impact on the company is pretty low at this point in their career. They support engineering development of parts and can design their own test fixtures. 
For instance, this was a test fixture that I designed in my first ever internship back in 2017. As an intern, you're starting to become somewhat of an expert at using your engineering discipline software tools. So SolidWorks or other CAD softwares for mechanical engineers, or maybe Python or C++ for software engineers. You're also expected to have relevant school project experience. Finally, the ambiguity of this role is pretty low, which means that every task you're given should probably be pretty straightforward. Now, a junior engineer is a recent grad and is someone that has anywhere between zero to two years of work experience. Hardware engineers at this level can get some design tasks, do a lot of testing for a lot of the parts that they're working with, or do some failure analysis. Whereas software engineers, on the other hand, can find themselves writing code, tests, or documentation, and they can also find themselves participating in design reviews or coding reviews, where they're basically looking at their coworkers' work and giving them some constructive criticism. At this level, you should have a decently strong understanding of your engineering fundamentals. So for mechanical engineers, that would be material science and manufacturing processes. Or for software engineers, that could mean having a good understanding of data structures and algorithms and being pretty proficient in your coding language of choice. At this level, again, the ambiguity is pretty low, which means you're going to spend a lot of time working with the lead engineer or your manager, trying to make your tasks pretty straightforward and very clear. The next level is an engineer. They will have anywhere between one to five years of work experience. A hardware engineer at this level can be in charge of designing parts and sub-assemblies, whereas a software engineer at this level will be in charge of designing large features, but still get some help from a senior engineer. The impact you have at this role starts with understanding the product life cycle for the parts, features, or sub-assemblies that you're in charge of. You're responsible for taking a part or a feature from a concept to a working product. Now the part or feature you're working on isn't necessarily the most important part, but it's somewhat important for the overall product that the team is working on. At this stage, you're also going to start to develop deep technical expertise in one area of engineering. For example, cameras can become your thing or you can become the go-to person for suspension systems. At this stage, you also start to have a little bit more ambiguity in your role, somewhere between low to medium. This means that you start to participate in design requirement discussions, or instead of being given a very well-defined problem, you can start working on problems that are a little bit more complicated and aren't as clear or straightforward. At this stage, you should also have a decent amount of experience so you can look at your coworkers' work, give them some feedback or constructive criticism based on your expertise. Now, when you're a senior engineer, you can have anywhere between three to 10 years of work experience. You don't just own a part or feature anymore. Instead, you own a system of multiple different parts and features. From the work experience you've had so far, you should probably have a deep technical understanding of multiple areas of engineering. If you're a software engineer at this level, you may be working on improving the overall code structure, whereas a hardware engineer may be focusing on improving the overall design of a product. At this stage, you're not just concerned with your own projects anymore. You have to look at the bigger picture and see how you can improve the entire product. You can find yourself having medium ambiguity in this role. That's because you can find yourself being given technical problems and having to figure out the solution to them without much help from anyone else, just having to use your own expertise. A lead engineer is someone with over six years of work experience. You're now leading projects and planning the design requirements for the projects that you're responsible for. Obviously, you're not doing the entire project yourself because you're going to hand off some of these simpler aspects of the project to younger engineers. You're so good at a specific aspect of engineering, they are really just here to guide people through the technical aspects of a project using your experience. The ambiguity of this role is pretty medium, since you're going to find yourself working with engineering managers and PMs, trying to clarify the engineering and product requirements of a project. Now we move on to the big dogs. Staff engineers are people that have well over 10 years of work experience. They're out here looking for the most important work, prioritizing it and coming up with a plan of action to get that done. They're experts in many technical areas. They have very high level ambiguity because they basically work on taking problems that are really vague and confusing and breaking it down and making it clear so younger engineers can handle these problems. Finally, we have the principal engineer, which is someone with over 15 years of work experience. At this point, you're influencing all the engineering teams and you're setting goals for them to achieve. You can also find yourself helping them create processes to make their work a lot more efficient. You're also up there with the CEO defining the company's direction for the future. You definitely don't have time to be catting, coding, designing, or building anymore because you're too busy finding these big technical problems, trying to break them down so younger engineers can solve them more easily. And the only reason you're able to do that is because over the 15 years of work experience that you have, you've developed an expertise in so many aspects of engineering. The ambiguity of this role is very high because it's literally in the job description to take these big, complicated problems and break them down and simplify them for younger engineers and also coach them through it. 
As you climb the ladder from engineering intern to principal engineer, you'll obviously be getting a lot more responsibility, which means you'll be getting paid more. With every level I mentioned so far, it's easy to find yourself chasing that next promotion or trying to get to that next level. But it's important to realize that this chase never ends. And if you're not happy with the current role that you're at, then you're gonna find yourself on this hamster wheel going nowhere. I'm personally not a big fan of climbing the corporate ladder because to me, it feels like a never ending rat race. I don't care about getting promoted. I just value doing work that I really enjoy and just trying my best to constantly be learning and improving my skills. As I do more of it, I get better, which may lead to more pay and more responsibilities in the future, but that's not the main goal that I have in mind. So whenever I find myself unhappy of where I'm at now and thinking I'll be a lot happier when I get that raise or that promotion, I remember one thing my great grandfather. I honestly know nothing about him, how he lived his life, what he looked like, or even where he's buried. It makes you realize that no one in this world will remember you once you're gone, not even your own family. So getting that promotion is so insignificant in the larger scheme of things, and all we really have in this world is our happiness. Damn, I did not mean to get so philosophical. Uh, anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, check out this video where I share with you what I do on a day-to-day -day basis as a mechanical design engineer, or check out that video where I share with you my experience working as a Tesla engineer. Anyways, I'll see you in the next one. Peace!